What's up YouTube, this is Hill Phantom, this is my second part on Starlink, Elon Musk and SpaceX newest venture into providing the world internet via satellite internet service up in the sky, deep in space, actually not even deep in space, on the mid-layer space, but we won't get too technical. Today I want to talk to you about the actual physical install, what I did to bring the satellite from the outside inside my house, and some decisions I made there and why I made those decisions. And then lastly, I want to go through uh, the application and how you set up the uplink from your satellite dish to the satellites up there. My use case is a little bit different than most folks, actually for mobility. So for me, I want to use it for mobility to increase my safety. Now that's going to sound weird to some of you all, but for us that go into the backcountry or go RVing, we'd like to take the internet with us, especially in the backcountry. So that provides us with a second channel. So we all have spots or little Garmin devices that we can get basic texts out and an SOS button, but it's always nice to have a second channel to get more data. So not only for safety if someone gets hurt to have another channel, but also so that we can have data. And for us who do a lot of skiing in the backcountry, snowboarding in the backcountry, it's all about snow science so if we can get the recent updated forecast of the avalanches if we can get the weather information the more data we can get out in the field the better so this is just going to increase the overall safety of myself and my team and my crew when we're out there so I don't know if we're gonna be able to do that from what I understand unfortunately from reddit and some people that have tested this out really the swath that comes and covers your house is locked into a geolocation of where you signed up for the beta and we're all we're only talking talking about the beta here. We don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully they lift some of these restrictions, but for right now that's lost about 15 miles, give or take, that they can really track you in. So it's not very granular, but if you go outside of that 15 miles, supposedly, again, I haven't tested this, I will on later videos, it's not going to connect and it's not going to work. Now that kind of puts a damper on what I intended to use it in use case for safety and having internet in the backwoods and in the crazy places uh, and in the back country to keep us all safe. That dream, I may have to wait until the full launch. Now, I do believe they're probably gonna ease up on that or maybe provide another package where we can take this thing on the road because we would love to do it for folks who RV and we would also love to do it for in the backcountry. So with that, let's go take a look at how I set it up. All right, we're out here at a GCI receptacle on the outside of my house. I didn't want to drill into the house itself or go into the roof because as I mentioned, I want to keep it mobile. So what I decided to do was find an outlet so I didn't have to drill through here. So you'll see what I did. All right, so that's open. Hopefully you can see this, but just a standard outlet. I pulled that off and pulled the receptacle out after of course I've turned off all the circuitry. I recommend if you're not familiar with this to have an electrician do it. Um, definitely don't do this by yourself. I just drilled a hole um, through the face place here and on the back of the gang box, on the back of this thing, was actually a punch out plate and it's just basically a perforated hole you can punch out. Once I did that, I was able to stick my screwdriver all the way through and pierce the drywall on the other side. So in a way, this was already pre-cut in, this is winterized, this will keep the cables very dry, um, won't allow any weather to get in here in Montana when it gets a little cold. You see this, this is just the wire that goes to the satellite dish, so it goes out and to my backyard back there. But that's the setup we have on the outside, I'll go on the inside and show you that. Right, we're back on the inside, you can see, let me tilt the camera up a little bit, you'll see here, this is the other side of that receptacle on the outside wall. <clears throat> That's where I poked the screwdriver through. I cut a bigger piece out with this drywall saw, so just kind of poked through and then made a little crevice there that I could reach through <clears throat> and grab this wire. Now this is the wire that was outside there that goes to the satellite dish. So what I did is once I got it through here, I used a actually a coat hanger and just shimmied it down below. Now I did cut another access panel here. Uh, you can see I'm still constructing this area down the basement and finishing up. So this will all be underneath wood anyways, a little countertop, but I'll probably bring the receptacle down below uh, as normal to code or on the other side here once I'm done. Now I'm gonna do something interesting because I wanna be able to take that cord with me until they make it removable. Best I can tell, this is not removable. It's a 100 foot cord, but it's attached to both the satellite <clears throat> no way to detach it here. But you can see here we have our standard GAT7, whatever it may be. This is the power block, so we plug the power block in. It's got a white and a black port. Plug the black port in, it's gonna go to your satellite. And then over here you'll see we have the modem. 
So from the modem, we're gonna go ahead and plug in the actual modem to the power brick. This block is actually gonna give you power over the ethernet. It's gonna power everything from this one power block. So this is how I chose to bring it through the outside receptacle into the house, and then I'll make another gang box down below here. Uh, but overall, that's the quick, easy way to set it up. You know, back here, there is uh, two lights on, and those lights are just glowing solid white. The modem right now is blinking, and basically what that means is it's looking for a signal. So let's let it seek for that signal. I'll wait for the solid light on here to turn solid white, and that's when I'll know that it is uh, communicating with the satellite or ground station and that we are getting a signal. So this is the inside setup. Let's move on to the software setup. All right, here we are. I'm on my um, Apple iPad, and we are going to quickly search for Starlink app. All right, we see right here, we go ahead and get that Starlink app. It is almost done, let's open it up. And it is the wrong landscape, of course. So let's just make it easier on ourselves. And go here. So this is the screen that you will see. We're going to start setup. Just going to walk us through what we already did. Um, basically connecting it from the inside out. We're going to go. It's going to have us connect. So we're looking for Starlink. Obviously, I'm the only one in my neighborhood with Starlink that I know of. It corresponds to, and that corresponds to my modem on the back of the router. It'll bring us to a login area where we can name what we want our Wi-Fi network to be. So I'm quickly going to do that really quick. And we will name it Rebel Base. Close that out. Now, let's see if we can connect here and connect. And it looks like just like that, we are connected. So, pretty painless. Walks you through the steps of connecting. Now we're once there. Let's go ahead and do some speed tests. All right, now that we've got everything installed, we're going to run a speed test. The first one's by Measurement Lab. We will run that, see what we get here. So right off the bat, getting some decent speed. 129, 130, I can live with that. Pretty decent. Let's see what we get on upload. So we are on 17, 18. You know, I've seen it fluctuate between that and like 26, 27 max. So, you know, higher, higher download speeds, most important to me. I can have a decent upload speed. But again, you know, that's pretty consistent with what they're looking at. We'll run a speed of me test. We'll run this again. Start and you know, a little bit lower. And that makes sense. I mean, again, there can be some weather moving in, some cloud cover. It's not exactly clear here. But I've noticed that it's intermittent, meaning not that it's intermittent service, but it's just basically, sometimes you get fast speeds, sometimes you get lower speeds. And I think that's just the nature of satellite. But let's go, this one tends to be high. So let's see what this one says. 86, so we'll see what it averages out to. So again, not bad. We're gonna run speed, uh, speed of me. Again, I like this service. We'll see if we get any peaks here. But it did move into some cloud cover, so. Hopefully we stay in the 80s. And the upload speed, a little bit slower this time. So we'll wait to see. I'm interested to see what the latency will be here. So latency 80. So you can see it kind of bounces around. It could be due to some of the weather we're getting right now, which I should just say is just some clouds. Um, once that, I've noticed that it does affect it a little bit, the cloud cover, but see now we're right back up, so. Could be also be discrepancies in the tests and using different ones, but they are seem to be pinging similar resources. So we'll see what this upload is. Yeah, you can see the upload's really struggling now. So inconsistent findings, but overall, all that could be where I placed it. I might have to move it again and just see if that's you know something that I've have misplaced it. I will say that's something that I would suggest is keep it mobile so you kind of figure out where's the best angles for your satellite. Um, but overall, uh, although that kind of stinks, let's do it one more time just good for good measure. So again, we're getting those high download speeds. Not bad. 
and that's good, 130, 123, and then we're struggling on the uploads. So, I'm not going to walk you through it, it's good and bad, uh, you know, again, I'll continue to do this, but overall, that is the setup. So just a quick recap, that was the second final part of the installation of Starlink. So we went through how I brought it from the outside to the inside, and we also went through using the app to get it set up and establish an uplink. We then checked out some of the speeds and we found it was a bit inconclusive. Now that could be to where I'm positioning it around the house and not getting a clear view of the sky. I'll continue to experiment with that stuff. Could be the cloud cover, but overall I've been pretty pleased uh, considering it's my first satellite system and uh, seems to be pretty solid. I'm happy to be a beta tester. I'll continue to do some videos on my findings as I move through the beta process. I sincerely hope that we see the option to take this mobile as we move out of the beta. Um, but yeah, it's been a pleasure to be a part of this um, journey and happy that you guys came along. If you like what you see, please hit the like button. I don't get paid for the channel, but you know, it helps my heart. Also, hit the subscribe button if you wanna be notified. I've got some cool videos coming up on the Raspberry Pi 400 on some mods I made um, for that so I can make it more mobile itself. So you can see kind of a theme of trying to bring all this stuff in the backcountry and be a little nerdy about it, but it's my passion as well as doing a lot of stuff outdoors and using these tools to help me in my adventures. Anyways, I'm Hill Phantom. I hope you come along. Hit the subscribe button. You'll be notified when I put these out. Let's get it. Yep.